So here's our assignment for activity 3.2.6 beam design. Uh, this will be found in my student share folder so you can go and get this document from there and you can see the name of it it's right up here. Alright so uh, we're going to be looking at four things in the uh, in this exercise you could read through all this stuff up here when you want to or when you get a chance don't forget here's the website for the charts that are used and I'm going to scroll down here and it says uh, that you are going to watch on Mr. Seward's YouTube channel the playlist 3.2.6 beam design and copy what you see into your notebook okay uh, that is for uh, two beams that is for an interior beam that's the first one and then uh, there is also girder on column line five uh, calculations that I'm going to show you in this video so pay attention to that I'm not going to go through the calculations but I am going to point out a couple things for external uh, beams and girders that are important so uh, you're going to be a two-person team there's going to be one partner that person is going to design the exterior beam and partner two will design the girder on column three so in total you're going to have three beam designs in your engineering notebook when completed so the interior beam that's on the playlist the exterior beam is not on the playlist partner one is going to uh, design that one Girder on column line three, that is an ex internal girder, partner number two, is going to do that one. And then girder on column line five the uh, is going to be shown to you in this video and a couple things pointed out about girders that are different than beams. So uh, one of the things you have to remember is that with exterior beams, the tributary area is one half of what... Uh, the tributary area is for an internal beam or an internal uh, girder. Uh, same thing for girders. The external gir external girder on line five, the tributary area is going to be one half of what it was uh, for the internal uh, girder. So I'm going to scroll down here a little bit and we're going to take a look. And you're going to see that I've laid these out by steps, and this is follows the pattern of the uh, naming in my uh, book. So step one and two, you're going to actually be using MD solids. Step one, two, and three, sorry. Uh, one, two, three, yeah, one and two, you're going to be using MD solids. And then number three, four, five, steps six and seven, you're going to be uh, doing via calculations. So um let's take a look with the software here at my uh, design and here is the uh, MD solids for this uh, column uh, on line five or girder sorry on column line five and what you'll notice is that the force down is 9,000 pounds that is half of what the force down is for uh, the internal uh, girder. Same thing for the uh, beam. When you have the external, it's half of the uh, internal because of the. Uh, uh, it's because because of the uh, tributary area. Okay, so here are the calculations that I did. I'm not going to go through these calculations, but there's steps number three, four, and five. Calculating for shear is that last one on this page. You guys need to put this into your notebook, and you should hopefully be able to follow this uh, format. And then over here, um, this is steps number six and seven. That's the deflection limits and the actual deflection. And what you'll notice is that when I do this calculation that this has a little different formula here than what it did for the beam. Um, when you have points and that's what uh, this one is back here this is point load on girders and 
you should remember that in uh, video 3.2.4 beam analysis shortcuts I show you how to do two points so if you don't know how to do two points in your uh, MD solids review that video 3.2.4 beam analysis shortcut using MD solids part two of two okay anyways we'll get back to this so you'll see that there is a difference here in the uh, formula it's not the same as what it was for a beam that was shown so uh, I have a note here it says because there are two point loads with the same values we can multiply this uh, result from the formula here times two uh, to get your total deflection you'll see that the total deflection here is 1.38 which is greater than this up here which is one so that beam that we have chosen uh, in this instance is not going to work this w12 by 19 so it's no good so what we have to do is we have to set up the f um, the uh, ratio like we did in the prior videos and we're going to choose the w12 by 22 and here's the ratio uh, value and you multiply that times the 0.69 from up here and you get uh, 0.45 times 2 because you can multiply that because of the two uh, point loads and you get a total deflection of 0.9 which is less than the one inch up here so that makes this beam uh, I believe that's a W12 by 22 good you can it just barely is off the page here so uh, that's the first thing so in total you're going to end up with three beams in your engineering notebook you're going to do the two that I've shown you uh, here in the video the seven step video and then uh, this video that you can just basically I know you're just going to copy it off of uh, the video and then uh, the beam that you have calculated yourself so that's it for beam design uh, and uh, we'll uh, look for uh, we'll uh, we'll try to do the best we can with this ask me for help